What's up guys, Matthew Costa here, I'm back at with another video for you. And today I am super excited because it is episode number two of my Boudoir for Beginners video series. And in today's episode, we're gonna be talking about these things right here, lenses. What lenses should you be using for boudoir photography as a beginner? So we are back after that intro. Thank you so much for sticking around, guys. And before I get into the information, I just want to remind you, please be sure to follow me on Instagram, which you'll see popped up right here, as well as go and drop a like on this video because I worked really hard on it for you guys. So please hit that like button, it means the world. And without further ado, let's start talking about lenses. Now, in the world of photography, there are a hundred and one different lenses that these manufacturers make and obviously want to sell to you. And as somebody beginning out in any type of photography, it can be really, really confusing not knowing much about lenses. Which ones should they have? Which ones should they choose? Which ones should they use? So I'm here to help simplify it for you from the point of view of a boudoir photographer. I think starting off a really good way to get into this topic would be if I explain to you the lenses that I personally use in my boudoir photography. Really, there's only two lenses that I use. Now there's the odd time I use a different lens, but for the most part, these are the only two lenses I use. We have the first lens, the Sony 85 millimeter F1.8. And this is actually an old vintage lens. It's a Pentax SMC Super Tacomar 55 millimeter, also F1.8. Now. You may or may not know what any of those numbers mean, and don't worry, we're gonna get into that, but these are the lenses I use, and they pretty much cover 99% of the photos I have ever taken when it comes to, even when back when I was doing regular portraiture, but especially when it comes to boudoir, pretty much these two lenses cover it all. But here's the thing, it's not about these two specific lenses, because I have a Sony camera, you might have a Canon, a Nikon, a Fuji, a Pentax, whatever else brand might exist 10 years in the future when this video is completely obsolete. What it's about isn't the specific physical lens, it's about the specifications of the lens and knowing how those are gonna help or hinder your photography and what specs you want, especially as a boudoir photographer. So we've covered what lenses I personally use for boudoir, but what about for you? What lenses in general, in a very general sense, can be useful for a boudoir photographer and might be useful to have in their repertoire. Starting from the longest lens, we have our 85 millimeter lens, then we're gonna have a 50 millimeter lens, and on the widest, a 35 millimeter lens. For boudoir, I really wouldn't go any longer than an 85. Any more telephoto than an 85 millimeter lens, you're not gonna even have the room for shooting unless you're shooting outdoors or you have a massive studio. Let me, let me put something into perspective here. The studio I'm shooting in right now that was like three steps and I'm at the wall. There really isn't a lot of room. Hotel rooms, bedrooms are tiny. Anything longer than 85, you really aren't gonna have enough room for shooting. Moving on, we have our 50 mil lens, which is kind of that in-between where it's not too long, not too short. The 50 mil lens is super useful because what it allows you to do is, again, have that in-between. It's not too long, not too short. It's very personal. It allows you to get in close to your model without getting too close where it's uncomfortably close, get a nice close shot, but it also allows you to take a couple steps back, get a more wide shot, show a little bit more of the environment, maybe get a full body shot even. I find it gives a very personal feel to the images. When you're shooting with the 50 mil lens, I truly feel like when you look at the images, it feels like you were there the day they were shot, that you're right there with the model. It is very intimate and that's something I like to capture in my boudoir photography. So it's something that you might wanna consider. And on the other end, we have a 35 millimeter lens. Now, like I said, this isn't one I own. However, I definitely see the appeal, especially when space is cramped and you wanna get a nice, wide, detail rich shot. A 35 millimeter lens for boudoir allows you to get not only a full body, but a full body shot where you're not head to toe in the frame. And basically the frame is essentially pulled back a little bit, 
you can see the entirety of your model or subject and you also have the environment. This can be really great if you're shooting in a nice high-end hotel room or if you're shooting in a nice home or whatever location you happen to be shooting in. If it's really nice and you want to show that off in the image, you can often use your environment as a prop to complement your subject. That's why a 35 millimeter lens can be really useful for boudoir photography. So one thing we talked about is how focal length affects the feel of the image. And I wanna get all into a little bit more detail in that. An 85 millimeter lens is considered telephoto. A telephoto lens means you don't have to be as close to your subject to get a nice tight shot. I personally use my 85 millimeter lens in boudoir for getting a lot of tight headshots or bust shots. And that's basically from here up, right? Like you'd go to a museum and you'd see a bust of a famous statue. The 85 millimeter lens allows me to get a shot like that without actually having to walk all the way up to my model and make them uncomfortable. It helps me get those shots while being at a comfortable distance away from the subject so it's not awkward. However, you are able to tell that. With an 85 millimeter lens, you're getting more compression than you would with a 50 or a 55-ish or whatever lens you have in that range. So you're gonna see less of the background. However, that can be used to your advantage. And it's important to understand these lenses. Just get out there and shoot and play around with them to learn your style as well as see how they work so you can make them work for you. Now, a 50 mil lens, or in this case, a 55 millimeter lens is a lot wider than an 85, but I wouldn't call it a wide angle lens. It's a standard. It's equivalent field of view to our eyes, essentially. What this lets you do is you're gonna have to get a little bit closer to your subject. It's gonna be a little bit more intimate. I find that that really comes across in the images you're capturing. And when viewing it, you can tell that the photographer was closer to the subject. It's gonna get that intimate feel because you really are able to tell that the photographer was closer to the subject at the time. I personally love Love, love, love that effect in my images. I feel it makes it feel more intimate, more romantic. And so that's an effect I love to go for. Now, when you're choosing lenses for boudoir photography, there's two more things that I think really, really, really play a massive role in choosing your lenses. You've noticed that the lenses I've suggested are all prime lenses, an 85 millimeter, a 50 millimeter, or a 35 millimeter. The reason I recommend primes for this is A, you become more specific with your lens choice and your image composition, rather than having a zoom, standing still, and just zooming in and out until you get a shot you like. You have to think, this is how my lens works, this is my field of view, do I gotta step back? or do I gotta walk forward? The other benefit of a prime is they're gonna have a fast, wide open aperture. You've noticed all the lenses I mentioned that I use are an f1.8. Especially as a beginner, an f1.8 lens is all you need. You can see right here, this lens, you can see right through it. This is the 55, you can see straight through it. Now if I close it, you can see the aperture ring stops down, but I almost never shoot stop down, I pretty much I'm wide open most of the time. The reason for this, if you don't know, is it's gonna give you a shallower depth of field the wider open this is. As you stop down your aperture, your depth of field is gonna get deeper and more things will be in focus. For example, the video I'm shooting right now, I'm shooting on a lens set to f4. So I'm in focus, but if I walk backwards, I'm quickly out of focus. And if I walk forward, if I get too close, I'm out of focus as well. The background behind me is out of focus. That's depth of field. If I was shooting at 2.8, which is the fastest this lens goes to, the background would be even more out of focus. The reason why I think this is so important for boudoir photography specifically, it adds to the romantic feel of the image and it can make the image feel almost more sensual. If your background is cluttered and it's full of junk and it's in sharp focus, it's gonna distract from the wonderful, wonderful, beautiful, subject of the photo that should be the main focus. It shouldn't be all the distracting stuff in the background. Like for example, if I'm shooting here, I got my mirror showing like a curtain I have up on the other wall. I have my flash back there, a desk with a shelf. I have my succulents on a posing stool. That's a lot of clutter. So that's why a shallow depth of field is a nice option to have. Now I don't shoot with the shallow depth of field all the time. I will sometimes go down to F4 or even F8 but I do it intentionally. Having the option to open up to f1.8 is incredibly helpful. And if you're just beginning out in boudoir, I think it's something that can aid your photography a 
huge amount. And that last thing, the second of the two I mentioned that I want to talk about for lens choice with boudoir photography is minimum focusing distance. One of the reasons why I love this specific lens that I have so much is because of its minimum focusing distance is 45 centimeters. So that means from the sensor of the camera to 45 centimeters is the minimum distance to have sharp focus with this lens. Now, despite being a 55 millimeter and my 85 millimeter lens would 100% get me closer because it's a longer lens, it actually doesn't focus nearly as close and it has a smaller reproduction ratio, which basically means the ratio of the size of the object in real life to the size of the object on the sensor. Now, in no way is this a macro lens at all, but it does focus close, closest out of all of my lenses that I own. It allows me to get really, really, really close. As you can see, when you're focusing up really, really close, it's a detailed shot. And a detail shot is something in boudoir photography that I personally think is incredibly important because it allows you to isolate a specific portion of your subject. I'm gonna stand back because this is really weird. Having the option to be able to focus close and get a detail shot is an incredibly versatile, but having the option to focus close and get a detail shot is something that I find invaluable in my toolkit as a boudoir photographer. And as a beginner, it's something you should really consider when choosing your first lens because it can make a drastic difference in what creative shots you can come up with. Okay guys, so this pretty much brings us to the end of the video. I talked my butt off about lenses. As you can probably tell, it's something I'm passionate about. I really love the nerdy, technical aspect of photography. And a lot of that happens to be in the optics and the lenses. I hope I was able to explain it in a simple way for you. As a beginner, what kind of lenses you should be looking for or looking at when choosing your next lens choice for boudoir photography, especially if you know a little bit about what you wanna shoot or if you have any ideas to this whole thing called your noggin. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you like this video, let me know by dropping a like down below. Seriously, it helps the channel grow and it lets me know that you guys like this video. And if you really like this video and you want more videos from me, Matthew Costa, please be sure to hit that subscribe button right now and hit the notification bell so you don't miss my next upload. I make new videos about photography every single week and I hope to see you in the next one. Now, what are you doing here? Get out there and create.